Well, it's been over 10 years since I was incarcerated. I do have friends that are still locked up that calls regularly or that writes and like, hey, I've seen you in the newspaper. I just want to tell you, keep doing what you're doing. So, like my name rings bells in there, good or bad. The passion for cutting hair really came about for me in prison. I learned that you have to be more than a barber as a barber. You are a mentor, you are a counselor. Meeting the needs of people is probably my greatest strength in the barbershop. But it's actually a world out there that does not get to come in here, and it's not by choice. Some people really can't afford it. Some are homeless. Some are sick and shut in. So I've developed a passion of being able to take the service to them. Mr. Trent, what's going on, my man? While working on Cut King's mobile barbershop, I actually found out that it was illegal to do mobile cuts. I thought, I'm gonna be the one to change this. I'm gonna fight the law. And this time, I plan on winning. Growing up in Waterloo, I intermingled with the wrong crowd. I was in and out to the juvenile detention center 15, 20 times. My first daughter was born seven days after my 14th birthday. I had my second child at age 16. I was drug dealing, so I was taking care of them financially. I did a lot of damage to people in the community. I went to prison four times. My son, on one of the visits in prison, he was just like that. I know you say your family is your number one priority, but if we were your number one priority, you'd be here with us and not in prison. So the turning point for changing my ways was my son, knowing that he was looking for a better example. I got gray hairs from spending nights trying to devise a plan that would keep me free. In prison, I learned to like cutting hair seeing the reaction from people, seeing their spirits lifted from the haircut. That in itself grew a burning desire to become better. I realized that I'm more than just a drug dealer. I became the best barber in that prison in no time. After being released from prison in 2008, I graduated from Barber College. You have to have guidelines and principles that society can accept and benefit from. And you're developing that. That's what I see in you now. You really have a caring attitude. I do my best. I mean, I learn from you coming in. You call it barbershop talk. I'm gonna say I'm faking it till I make it, but I'm getting better. Everyone doesn't get to come to the barbershop. I just wanna try to meet the needs of those that can't afford or just can't get around, period. I want to be able to bridge that gap for the community. Then one night I had a dream, a vision, and Cut Kings was born. Cut Kings is a mobile barbershop fully equipped with hair washing sink, hand washing sink, Xbox, TV. I put the loud music in it, surround sound, put a barber pole in there so people know what it is. Who you play with on the WNBA? Uh, I said Sparks. The Sparks. Yeah. Is that because you're a Los Angeles Lakers fan for real? Mm. I started writing a business plan, but then I got an email saying that the whole mobile idea was prohibited. It was illegal to work outside the threshold of the traditional four-wall barbershop in the state of Iowa. After finding out it was illegal, I was crushed. Again, another door being closed in my face. You gonna pro provide free services, a service that's needed too. Why are you gonna contest that? Because of the law. Man. I'm trying to make it make sense to myself, but that's what it is. The law says hey, we have to. When I first learned about this story, I thought this was insane. I couldn't believe that this day and age, you could sell food out of a truck, you could groom dogs in a truck but you couldn't cut a human's hair, even though the bus resembled a real barbershop. This was just an outdated law. It's crazy on a number of levels. Who's harmed by a mobile barbershop? There's no victim in an economy that allows mobile barbering. We've got to do something about this case. I got a phone call out the blue, and it's like, hey, my name is Tyler. 
from America's for Prosperity. Been following your story. He asked for permission to just see this thing out like I'm here until the law is reversed. Learning of FP was meeting a friend. When you can see someone who's formerly incarcerated doing great things for their community, that makes society hopeful and maybe more willing to give those folks a second chance. It's important to make sure that William was empowered to have a voice so that he could share his story. This was gonna be us working together to help tear this barrier down. Right now, we are advocating for a very simple piece of legislation. It's one sentence and it changes the definition of a barbershop to allow a mobile location to operate in the state of Iowa. Americans for Prosperity has been working with legislators on this issue for almost a year now. When I look at the bill and how this started, it comes from the most humble roots you could ask for. And it just hit home that here was a guy that wanted to offer a service to the people in his district. So let's let William do what he does and do it well. So it's all about helping build relationships and spread the word that this is a good bill. This is William Burt. He learned how to be a barber in prison. When he got out of prison, he bought a van to open a mobile barbershop truck. But then he found out the state doesn't allow that. So now what? Having a mobile barbershop isn't legal, but he's hoping lawmakers at the state capitol will fix that. Legislation is making its way through both chambers to change that. Although the odds might have been stacked against him, he knows he's on the right path now. Talk to William Burt from Waterloo, a business owner working to change Iowa law to allow mobile barbershops, which I think is a good idea. William, please stand so that we can recognize your efforts to become an active and productive citizen of this great state. We also are working with William, building a community of support around him. We've connected them to classes on how you can impact your legislature, to tell your story and to be an advocate for yourself, to engage as citizen lobbyists to affect change in their state and in their community. It doesn't matter what business you're in, we're a team in here. And that's what this is about, inviting some of the entrepreneurs in here so we can keep fighting for the community. I'm a small business person. I heard your plight and I was like, Damn, that's not right. What would be great for this community is for each and every one of these small businesses here to have that flair, to have that vision, to have the freedom and the ability to grow and expand, to get to these kind of events and to say, we're not afraid. There are so many great people in Waterloo and thank you for being a candle to remind us of that. This is a start in the communities talking to your neighbors, talking to your people at work about your issues. If, if no one knows what you're going through, no one knows how to help. We're headed to the Capitol building. It's been a long couple years advocating for this law change in the bill, but it's happening. I can see what the future looks like for the business. Cut King service in the state of Iowa and maybe our services needed throughout the United States. There's unlimited potential here and I can only hope for it all. A barber shop is now on the move in Iowa. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds has signed a bill into law that now allows them across the state. And the bill passed unanimously, 49 to nothing in the Senate, 92 to nothing in the House. No one was happier than William Burt. Trying to hold back my tears. He plans to take it to anyone without access to a barber shop. Making a simple change to the definition of a barber shop opens up a lot of other opportunities in the state of Iowa. By changing this law, not only do we legalize mobile barber shops, but we really lay the foundation for bigger reform across occupational licensing and business regulation in our state. We hope that this story, that this bill inspires other people to step up and engage in the fight as well. Americans for Prosperity definitely gave me a platform, a stage where it's not just me anymore. It's someone in the background that can actually help me fulfill this mission. Seeing that someone believe in me, that's kind of huge. I just want to be the change creator. That's kind of my goal for this whole thing is to meet the needs of not only the facilities around town, but throughout the state, the communities, and then supply what they need. The biggest change about me now is, is understanding that nothing easy lasts. Anything worth having doesn't come easy. And that allows me to get up every morning 
and go to work. Keep trucking alone. It's about you putting yourself in a position so you can make change. Okay. I got that same chair in the bus. It's cheap. I don't even know who this is. Hello? William? Yes. It's Governor Kim Reynolds. How are you? Oh. Governor Kim Reynolds. I'm fine. Hey, hey, I'm calling with some good news. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to let you know that I received your application to have your voting rights restored, and I have reviewed it, and uh, you are uh, eligible to register to vote again. So I'm calling to let you know that. And to say congratulations. And we're going to be mailing you a certificate that confirms the restoration. But I wanted to call personally and just say congratulations. I know you've been working on this for a while, and um, it's good job. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm really honored to do that, so. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. I got a film crew standing here recording, okay. me, recording me with tears in my eyes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, I know it's really important, so uh, I'm proud of you. Thank you very much. You bet. Have a great day, and I'll be sending that documentation, the certificate, to you, okay? But yes. you're, as of today, your voting rights are restored. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Okay, you bet. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Well, you guys do. <laughs> you could have had me ready for that. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. A debt that he had already paid was still looming over him. A man behaving like a super citizen that was really involved now in changing a law in the state of Iowa didn't have the right to vote in his elections. And if anybody deserves the right to have a voice in his government, it's William Byrd. So the doors are opening and not being closed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>